calculation of reacting volumes of gases using Avogadro's law. Okay, let me just turn off the white snake. I'm in a vacuum tunnel here, and there are four samples of gases. Each is one mole of the gas. So I've got four grams of helium and 20 grams of neon, which is a mole of neon. Now notice how the volume of all these gases is the same. One mole of any gas at STP is 22.7 decimeters cubed. So each of these samples is one mole. Even though their masses are different, the volume is always 22.7 decimeters cubed, assuming STP. Now Dr. Atkinson says it's 22.4. The old IB syllabus was 22.4. The new one's 22.7. IB, you can't change constants. They're constants. Dr. Atkinson, thou shalt suffer my wrath. The reason that they're in a vacuum here is because the helium, of course, would float away if there was air in the room. How else could I measure it? 22.4. It was 22.4. Now it's 22.7. Oh, dear. Strangely enough, Avogadro didn't even know about the existence of atoms, but it's named in his honour of his experiments. So one mole of any gas at STP is 22. 0.7 decimeters cubed, and a decimeters cubed is also a liter. STP, well, standard temperature for gases is 273 Kelvin, and standard pressure is 100 kilopascals. Ah, in the previous syllabus, it was 101 kilopascals, and that's what's causing the discrepancy. Okay, let's look at some simple questions, moving on to trickier ones. So it doesn't matter if it's carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, or sulfur trioxide. It's any gas this is true about. So let's look at carbon monoxide versus carbon dioxide. Well, if I have a gas, carbon monoxide, the actual molecules, take up very, very little of the volume. Most of the volume of a gas is empty space. And if I turn the carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide, well, you know what? That's barely changed anything. The volume of the gas is still mostly empty space. And so that's a partial explanation as to why carbon dioxide doesn't take up more volume than carbon monoxide. Than that, but beyond the IB. So if I have 22.7 decimeters cubed of a gas and it has a mass of 44 grams, is it carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide? Well, it's a STP, so I know I must have one mole of gas. So which has a molar mass of 44 grams per mole? Carbon dioxide. 11.35 decimeters cubed seems an arbitrary number, but you know what? That's half a mole of gas, a STP. If one mole is 22.7 decimeters cubed, how many moles is 11.35? Half a mole. What's the mass? It's just simply working out the mass of half a mole of sulfur dioxide. So using the equation, mass is moles times molar mass. That gives me 32 grams. Now, like in all these videos, I don't have the time or inclination to fix the sig figs and the decimal places all the way through you should use the molar masses on the periodic table that the IB give you, which have a few decimal places. This is the Harbour process. You need to learn this equation. It produces ammonia. And so one mole of nitrogen needs three moles of hydrogen to make two moles of ammonia. And conversely, 10 to 30 to 20, the ratio works like that with the coefficients. But you know what? It's not just moles. It's also voles or volumes that work the same. 10 decimeters cubed of nitrogen reacts with 30 decimeters cubed of hydrogen to make, to make 20 decimeters cubed of ammonia. Okay, so this is the contact process used to make sulfur trioxide that makes uh, sulfuric acid to make plastics and fertilizers. You need to learn this. Let me put the values in. 6 decimeters cubed of sulfur dioxide and 8 decimeter cubed of oxygen. 
To find out the volume of SO3, you might be tempted to just add them up, and that's wrong. Avogadro's law says you can't do that. This is excess and limiting as well. So which is the excess and which is the limiting? Just like before, 6 over 2 and 8 over 1. Which is the lowest number there? Yeah, 6 over 2 is lower. So that's the lowest is the limiting. This is the limiting reagent. The other one's wrong. 8 decimeters cubed, that's wrong. That's too much. It's excess, excess, excess. All right, so now I know that 2 is to 6 as 2 is to 6. So I've got 6 decimeters cubed of sulfur trioxide. You can use the ratio like that. My mass of excess reactant, well, if 2 is to 6, then 1 is to 3 decimeters cubed. So I actually put in 8 decimeters cubed, but I only use 3, 5 decimeters cubed excess. Now the question asks for the mass. So what's the mass of 5 decimeters cubed of oxygen? Well, a mole of oxygen is 32 grams and 22.7 decimeters cubed at STP. And using some cross multiplication, I can work out the mass of oxygen. Okay, for this one here, we're assuming STP in all gases. Let me put the numbers in. That's the volume of nitrogen dioxide and 900 for the hydrogen. So I need the data for the star and the squiggle, and that should help me work out the first two. All right, excess and limiting. The volume divided by the coefficient, what's the lowest number? The lowest is limiting, so nitrogen dioxide is limiting. And so that's the number that I need. 900 is too much, it's excess, cross it out, excess. So 2 is to 227, as 2 is to 227. OK, that's the first answer. What's my mass of water? Well, 4 is to 454, and a little cross multiplication gives me 360 grams. The volume of excess reactant. Well, I, I put in 900, that was too much. So 2 is to 227, as 7 is to, a hmm, little more cross multiplication, to get 794.5. Hmm, so I put in 900, I only used 794.5, so I had 105.5 decimeters cubed excess at the end. And we're done.